So this is a song about something all around. You're seeing it every day, it's really quiet right now. You hold it in the evening, you touched it in love. I also have the great honor of introducing this lovely lady here who is responsible, I guess, for your entertainment, your main entertainment this evening, Mariam Hennen. And I've known Mariam, I don't know, a few years now, and uh, had the pleasure of meeting her at a film screening and then followed her project. There she is. And I've uh, really seen an incredible devotion, vibrance, energy, uh, and passion. You wouldn't believe it. So I guess uh, they teach you something good at Concordia. <laughs> and I think uh, pretty much all, without further ado, I'm going to ask you to give it up for the Queen Bee here. Monday evening, snowy nonetheless. Thank you so much. I'm a Concordia alumni and I'm very proud to present this film that I've been working on for four years. And I want to thank Cinema Politica, Ezra and Svelta for um, bringing me here and for the bees for bringing me to my hometown. And um, let's get the show on the road. I will be here after to answer questions and uh, we'll be offering my DVD for a suggested donation. Thank you. Hi, I just want to mention we also have Danielle Blaine who uh, runs an apiary in the Eastern Townships, uh, the honey uh, we, we have today. So if you have questions relating to apiculture or those sorts of things, Danielle may be able to answer as well. Thank you, Danielle. Thank you again for Cinema Politica for bringing me here and for all of those who showed up and my friends and family. Thank you for coming. Bless you in the mustache. I really enjoyed the film and I thought you had a wonderful cast of characters as your sources. The only thing I was missing, and I think it would have been a blast, is if you had gone into Bayer one of the other manufacturers. Yeah, we tried. Get one of those guys on camera. We tried. We weren't able to, but trust me, as an investigative journalist, I tried. We went and we did an interview. We were not allowed to film it. We were not allowed to even tape record it. We took one still and our camera was confiscated. So we definitely did try. We also interviewed people at Bayer, at EPA. The interview was absolutely useless. It was just gibberish. There was a PR person who was monitoring us the whole time. And as soon as my questions got hot, we got, you know, time was up. We had to leave. So we did try. I want to just tell you a little bit about the film. A lot of these social issue movies have these outreach campaigns. So we've launched our Be the Change outreach campaign and we're pairing up with gardening groups and beekeeping groups and film series like this one and universities and what people do is they license the film from us either in their home for their home or as part of a group and then they can charge admission and raise funds and awareness for their own group so there's this win-win situation that is very much in uh, Ode of the Honeybee, which is a social insect. It's all about the greater good and helping one another. Um, I wanted to say thank you very much and congratulations. It's a very, very well made movie. And I, <laughs> I certainly buy the uh, DVD. Um, having said that, uh, I wanted to alert people to the fact that we have the best democracy that money can buy. Um, we have a, a conflict of interest here in Health Canada because while Health Canada is supposed to be protecting our health, it is also promoting the food industry. So go figure. And I just wanted to say um, that uh, Har the Harper government is always saying the economy, the economy, and uh, we're supposed to be in service to the economy. The, 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 the new God has become the economy, and this is the result. Congratulations. Uh, I imagine it's uh, kind of difficult to put a radio uh, collar on a bee, but um, I was wondering, there are so many uh, biologists who do track populations and the mystery seems, well the jury seems out still on where these bees have gone. Are they lemmings? Do they go to commit mass suicide? Do they 
uh, go to try to find uh, some tenable patch of ground. Is there any science on where the bees actually end up? Well, like we mentioned, the honeybee can't be alone for more than 24 hours, so if she's going out and foraging for the day and she's in a monoculture, everything looks the same, and she has Alzheimer's and her brain is a little bit tweaked, and she doesn't get back home, and hence she disappears, and she biodegrades into the earth. And, so they're, uh, not, they're not swarming en masse? Well, there is a condition called absconding where they, for the, you know, there is a theory that for the greater good of the hive, if they're sick, they will leave. And, but we don't think that that's what is happening. And maybe they're going to the fourth and fifth dimension or Venus. Or I always tell people for the, in the organic beekeeping world, the bees never left. So maybe they're just, they're here to give us a message and tell us like, we're out of here. If you guys aren't going to respect us, then we'll go somewhere else. Could we hear from the, the beekeeper on how beekeeping is going in Quebec in terms of supporting um, organic beekeeping and how the pesticide battle is happening on the ground or air? Or okay, I'll, I'll do my best here. I, I must say that uh, we, we're a team, my husband and I, and I mean, usually, like, he's the bees and I'm the buzz, mostly. <laughs> Uh, and uh, like this week we had short notice for this and he couldn't change his schedule so he's at the apiary uh, as we speak well he's, he's there this week um, so I don't go to all the meetings and follow all the research uh, the situation is is not easy for some of the same structural reasons that were very well enunciated in your film I think that you know the picture that came out of there was pretty clear and, and pretty much, you know, uh, says what is happening right now. In terms of the organic beekeeping, I mean, uh, those of you familiar with the uh, agricultural environment in Quebec uh, know that the uh, situation uh, has this particular twist that we have a monopoly in uh, representation of uh, farmers, which doesn't make uh, the expression of diversity and diverse view very easy. Um, organic beekeeping uh, is, uh, is fragile as it is uh, everywhere. Uh, we have had organic management since our inception. We have 30 hives. We're small and we intend to stay that way. Uh, there are not many of us. Uh, and uh, it certainly is uh, more work, more effort uh, and, and uh, harder. Uh, what it boils down to is that if you do the organic beekeeping, uh, it means that you tend more to your hives, you have to be more present, you certainly don't move your hives around to, to, to pollinate the way the industrial beekeepers do. Uh, you respect the natural hive cycle. Uh, so, and, and it's a lot of work, you know, and, and the, the issue of the prices that are being paid, I mean, if you, if you look in the stores and, and uh, the issue of the honey coming from China and other countries, uh, where there are no control over the production uh, quality uh, and, and it's just dumped here at prices that can be met. Uh, so no, you, 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 don't make real, you don't make money when, when you're a beekeeper, that's for sure. And when you're an organic beekeeper, not more. Hi. Um, I'm, uh, I'm just wondering about uh, beekeeping and if, if it deters in the bees' lives at all, or like, um, is it productive in a certain way of like what you get out of it in terms of I don't know, food and I don't know. I'm I'm saying this because I'm a, a vegan questioning whether I should eat honey or not. <laughs> well, I you know there's some vegans who don't eat honey, and for me, one honeybee who lives she lives six weeks will will produce a teaspoon of honey. So next time you have a big spoonful of honey, you realize how sacred that honey is and that it's medicine. And I believe like in my practice, in my rituals, honey is very much part of my my life and the bees and their products, not royal jelly, but it's really an individual, you know, what does it what how does it feel to you? I feel like if I buy honey from a local beekeeper and I'm supporting that beekeeper and I know that he or she's not greedy and I'm using it in a sacred manner, then it's okay, but that's just me. Yeah, I just want to compliment you very on this outstanding work. I hope you get to show it at all the universities across Canada. 
I really, I really love the quote when it said that uh, the minds that created the problem can't solve it. That's why it's so important to show it in the universities. Uh, yeah, it's crucial for, yeah. for youth to... You guys are doing amazing things on the campus. And I bet within impressive. a few years that uh, if universities can see it and we have such a great movement that we can change the way things are. And this is the vision. We've got to leave our planet up. Our children a better planet than what we have. With, right with now. that said, if you guys are on Facebook, please join our virtual hive, Vanishing of the Bees. We have 12,000 people that we've gathered in a year, and, and we really want to spread the buzz. Uh, George and I, my co director, have been working extremely hard, and we really need a hive to support us. So you can come and donate, even if it's just a little bit, it makes a difference. We're putting together a Kickstarter campaign online to try to put together an educational version. Because I'm just going to work on bees for the rest of my life. That's what I'm just going to do now. Well, I hope we all can be, become part of that hive.